and we can see that we have an error. We've got those uh, async warnings that we can take care of as well uh, very soon, but we can see that there's no argument given that corresponds to date resolver of Cambridge order processor in our uh, order processor factory, I would imagine. So if we head back there, the district order factory, we can see now we need to have access to an I date time resolver. And now Cambridge order processor has all the dependencies that it needs. And again, one of the things that I usually like to do if we have more than uh, more than two dependencies is just put them on separate lines here. It makes it a lot easier to read. Okay, so that's set up. We should be building now, albeit with the async warnings, um, which are just telling us that a few of our methods in our the, the various order processors that we have um, are overriding an async uh, task method, but they're running synchronously because they don't actually contain any async code, whereas some of the other uh, some of the other concrete classes do. Um, and we could resolve that by wrapping all of them in um, a method which itself only invokes an async method in the classes that needs it. Um, but we'll leave that for the time being to focus on finishing up this test. And so now we can actually just try to run the test. Uh, and I've actually run into this error before, and I completely forgot about this, but um, it's telling us that we have more than one entry point uh, defined in our program, compile with slash main. All right, so this is a problem that you might run into if you try to run uh, XUnit in a console app like refactoring.web is. It's a web app, but all of .NET Core uh, runnable web apps are just console apps of course so what we're going to do here is I am going to create a new XUnit project just for this project and we'll move the tests out which is good practice anyway I hadn't really planned on doing it to keep the uh, focus kind of small um, but it's good practice in any case and so we might as well do it especially so that we can get this running so I'm going to go up a directory into the root of the project where we have our web project and we're going to run .NET new XUnit o refactoring tests And then I'm going to run .NET SLN add refactoring.tests. This adds it to the solution. Now we can see that we have that uh, directory here for the project, and it's part of our solution as well. Oops. So we can see it, uh, the project includes the tests project as well. And then open it back up. You may not need to do that. Oops, and it looks like our web project is now not part of this. Apologies for that. So if, that, if that's the case, then we can also run .NET SLN add refactoring.web. So now refactoring.web is added to the solution, and we should see both of them here. So sorry about that. But now we have our tests as a separate project. And so all I'm going to do is remove the unit test that's in this test project by default. And I'm going to move this whole directory here, which is just going to copy it into the test project. Um, and in this case, it's been removed. If your IDE just copies it, uh, then you can remove it from the web project. We're going to manage the NuGet packages here. And we're going to remove mock queue from the web project. I'm going to remove XUnit and the uh, test SDK and the XUnit runner for Visual Studio. So you definitely don't want to keep dependencies around for projects that don't need them. And then here we're going to add a reference to our refactoring uh, web project. Okay, so we come in here. Now we need to manage NuGet packages for our test project. Add mock here. Likewise, add fluent assertions here. And we should already have XUnit and the runner installed as well. So that's good. And the XUnit project from the CLI also includes the coverlet collector for doing code coverage and the Microsoft.NET test SDK. So we know that that's good. Now we're going to 
update the namespace, clean up the file a bit, and now this test should be runnable. We can build the whole solution just to make sure everything's building now. And so we're building with those async warnings for the two classes that override a method which doesn't contain uh, any asynchronous calls. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run our test and see if it's running. And our test is passing, so that's good. We can kind of check to see, just as a gut check here, um, we can uh, put something in here that should be false. So if I just put in foo here, this should be false. And if we run our test again, uh, we can come here and just run the test again. This should now fail. And it fails. And you can see that the expected result was foo to be of length 3, but the URL, which was actually the case, has a length of 37 and it differs near the beginning, etc. So xUnit is giving us some nice feedback here. So let's come back, we'll run our tests again, and we'll see them pass. Okay, so that's great. Now we can write sort of the inverse of this test as well. Given that it's not Tuesday, we shouldn't have an advert. So given date is not Tuesday, image URL uh, not set on order advert. So in any case, when uh, the daytime resolver, it is Tuesday method returns false, it should be the case that the image advert image URL should be null. And we have a, a helper extension method for that. Instead of just say be null with uh, null as the argument, we can just say should be null. Okay, so now let's run these. And those are passing. So that's definitely a good thing. I just want to show you that you can also run these from the terminal just with .NET test but we should go into the test project, I think. Well, let's see if it discovers our tests here. So that's cool. It does actually find those tests. I'll make this a bit bigger. The other thing we can do is uh, do .NET test dash V. Um, diag would be diagnostic test. D would be detailed. So let's just look at the difference here. Uh, detailed test is quite, um, quite verbose. <laughs> uh, really, we just kind of want to see these. Um, I think if we were to run Diag, it's going to be even more verbose. Yeah, this is way too much information for us, although this could definitely be useful if we really need to inspect what's happening in the, the uh, task performance uh, summary. You can see the really low, much lower level calls that are getting invoked. Um, wow, with a lot of uh, exceptional amount of debugging information, I would say. So if you have some tests that are really stumping you as to why they're failing, um, and you want to dig in a lot deeper and probably get more confused before you figure it out, then you could run with the uh, verbosity of diagnostic. I think if you just run .NET test help, you can get uh, the other verbosity levels, quiet, minimal, normal, or diagnostic. So usually I would say .NET test dash V normal would be uh, definitely sufficient uh, for enough information here. Uh, so that we can see the tests that were actually run and the amount of time it took. Okay, so just uh, an aside there on some testing. Let's look at testing another one of these uh, Cambridge or another one of these district order processors. If we go into our services and order processors and we look at, I don't know, let's look at another one that has some more interesting logic in it. Uh, county one is not that interesting. Neither is downtown. The, middle t the Middleton order processor here uh, invokes a deal service. Um, and this is another case where we could run into a problem. If we take a look at our deal service, the implementation is basically getting a random local business from a list of local businesses, um, actually a hash set of local businesses, I believe, and um, we're calling random.next. Now, you could make an assertion that it is any one of those random uh, instances if we were testing the deal service here. Um, we could also control the value of next in the same way that we control our datetime uh, values with the datetime processor by extracting a service here. 
um, that we could then inject into our deal service, uh, which then we could also control as we write our unit tests. So just for the sake of doing that, as another example, we can look at that. Um, so here we're going to create a random helper, which sounds like a lazy name for a helper that we don't know what it does, so it's just a random helper. <laughs> we're going to uh, have a public t get random value for t. Maybe we'll say get random value from list, where we have a list of t, or we can just have an enumerable of t items. And then, as you can see in deal service, how we use this is we new up a random, and then we call random.next. And this is actually getting an index. So what we want to do actually is call uh, items.count. And so maybe we make this a list explicitly. So this is a random index. And then we return items random index. Okay. And then we can make this more generic by doing it this way as well. We should be able to call to list on our items enumerable or in fact just uh, enumerate it to a list uh, right away up here and then call random.next okay likewise we could enumerate that to an array as well but all right so we've got our random helper we're going to extract in an interface as always Again, this is just an example of how you make these things more modular so that you can test them and how you extract uh, things which you don't have control over, uh, which is really, I mean, if you think about it, that's like the core motivation of uh, writing things like plugins, you know, writing things with inversion of control in mind. Just like I don't have control over um, whatever's coming back from some... Uh, HTTP request or from some database. I don't have control over any IO. I don't have control over what the system time is. I don't have control over some random value. But if I want to make assertions about something, I want to say things like, given that this particular result comes back, how does my system behave? How do the things that I have control over behave? All right, so we're going to come into interfaces and then we're going to add an interface here. I random helper and then we'll come to startup we'll wire this up make sure that it's implemented now startup should be happy about the uh, wiring up, so that's good. So we'll close the county one, we'll close the downtown one. The Middleton one is the one that's making use of the deal service. So we can go into deal service. We'll create our constructor, which takes an I random helper. create that backing field and now when we get a random local business we can get rid of the new random we can just say random helper dot get random value from list of type string from our local businesses and this is implicit now so we can remove that
and var random business is this, which we can return, so we can just return that directly. And in fact, this becomes an expression. So you notice that this is one thing that Sandy Met says. Uh, again, going back to her talk, um, Polly want a message is that when you start implementing some solid OO, uh, it's often the case that you get uh, functional outcomes in a lot of cases. Now that's, I'm not probably saying that correctly, but we can see what we have now is get random local businesses or get lo random local business is just a function. Um, it's just returning a string um, and we have an instance, it's still an instance method. We have a random helper on the instance of our deal service, um, but the method itself is essentially just a function that says using what I have here get the random value from a list using this uh, essentially static list of local businesses. Okay, so with that we can actually test deal service and we can also test our Middleton order processor. So what I'm going to do is in our tests project I'm going to go ahead and create a directory for our helpers. This is actually in services, so we're going to namespace everything into service tests. So we'll just bring both these directories into services. Then in helpers, we're going to add a class for test deal service. Oh, and deal service actually isn't in helpers, so we're going to pull it back out to services. That's okay, we can still write tests for our helpers as well. Um, but for test deal service, we're going to update all the namespaces in the whole solution just to take care of that all at once. And now we'll say fact. And as usual, I'm going to create a vertical split. We'll take a look at uh, deal service. And then the tests on the left. 